I am not a historian, but neither are you. So, how about we the people learn this stuff together? Welcome to US 101. And for today's episode, guys, it's the first time we've talked about this subject. We're talking about, nope, not the burrito supreme, not the chicken supreme, not the veggie supreme, if that's a thing. We're talking about the Supreme Court. It was a bad joke. I apologize. The magic number in Washington, D.C. these days is nine, as in who will become the new ninth Supreme Court justice after Justice Anthony Kennedy, who has served on the Supreme Court since 1988, retires at the end of this month. All across the country, people are speculating as to who Trump is going to nominate so that the Supreme Court can finally overturn Roe v. Wade. I mean, I mean, deliver impartial justice. That's what I meant. All right, guys, hey, look, just a little uh, Liberty Bell crack in the episode. Yes, stupid joke. Let's all move on. Okay, so um, I filmed the episode this week uh, before Trump made his uh, official nominee pick for the Supreme Court. And uh, as I'm editing the episode, um, it just came out that he has nominated Brett Kavanaugh to replace uh, Justice Anthony Kennedy on the Supreme Court. Kavanaugh being a, a, a more conservative judge, um, uh, deep ties with the GOP. Um, so yeah, so that's who he's nominated. So now you guys are all caught up. Let's get back to the episode so that you can learn some stuff. Here's a question for you. Why does there have to be nine Supreme Court justices? Why can't there be eight or ten or seven or one for that matter? Now the uninformed might say something like, well, it's, it's the law. Right? There have to be nine Supreme Court justices because I'm sure it's somewhere in the Constitution of the United States. Right? Actually, it's not. At no point in Article 3 of the Constitution, which has to do with the judicial branch, does it state anything about how many justices have to sit on the bench of the Supreme Court. The judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as the Congress may from time to time ordain and establish. The judges, both of the Supreme and inferior courts, shall hold their offices during good behavior and shall, at stated times, receive for their services a compensation which shall not be diminished during their continuance in office. And that's it, guys. That's, that's all the Constitution says when it comes to the judges that sit on the bench of the Supreme Court. So technically, technically, you could just have one Supreme Court justice wielding the supreme law of the land and doling out justice as they see fit. But luckily, <laughs> luckily it isn't that way. Because in 1789, the same year that George Washington was elected president, Congress passed what was then called the Judiciary Act of 1789. Very original name. The act states the following. The Supreme Court of the United States shall consist of a chief justice and five associate justices, any four of whom shall be a quorum, and shall hold annually at the seat of government two sessions, the one commencing the first Monday of February and the other the first Monday of August. So at first, the Congress was all like, yeah, six. It's a nice, good, round number, man. And at the same time, that'll, that'll encourage a lot of debate when it comes to the law among the justices. And at the same time, the law won't appear too one-sided. Their decisions won't appear too one-sided. Six. Good number. But over time, as we do know, that number would change. It first occurred in 1801 when John Adams and the Congress, which was comprised mostly of, uh, of Federalists, passed the Judiciary Act of 1801, which dropped the number of justices on the Supreme Court from six to five. Now, why would John Adams do that? Well, because he wanted to make sure that he could limit the number of justices that incoming President Thomas Jefferson could appoint to the bench of the Supreme Court because, you see, John John Adams, at times, could be petty as f But to quote Thomas Jefferson from the musical Hamilton, oh, we can change that. You know why? Because I'm the president. And that's exactly what he did. He, uh, he just repealed the Judiciary Act of 1801 and uh, moved the number back up from five justices to six. Then, by way of adding a seventh federal court circuit, Jefferson upped the number of justices from six to seven. And that number would remain at seven until 1837 when President Andrew Jackson, Ajax over here, added two more justices to the bench at the Supreme Court due to the fact that Congress had established even more federal circuit court districts. And then in 1863, the number rose from nine to ten Supreme Court justices, which is the highest number of justices we have ever had on the Supreme Court in United States history. But apparently, 
that number was just a wee bit too high for Congress by the time we get to 1866. In 1866, Congress passed the Judicial Circuits Act, which did two things. First, it lowered the number of justices on the Supreme Court from 10 to 7, and secondly, it stopped then-President Andrew Johnson from adding any new justices to the bench. Yeah, Congress, Congress and Andrew Johnson really just really just didn't get along with each other. It's probably, it's probably why they tried to impeach him that one time. <laughs> uh, anyways. And then in 1869, Congress passed yet another Judiciary Act, which again changed the number of justices on the Supreme Court, this time from seven to nine. That act was signed into law by President Ulysses S. Grant, and since then, the number of justices on the Supreme Court has remained at nine. But, uh, I mean, there was that one time, though, that uh, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt said that he wanted to add uh, even more justices to the Supreme Court, like, like a like a whole lot of justices. To the, he wanted he wanted like fifteen justices on the bench of the Supreme Court. His rationale behind the idea was that he wanted a new justice on the bench of the Supreme Court for every justice that was currently sitting on the bench that was over the age of seventy that didn't want to retire. And FDR even tried to defend his position to the American people via one of his famous fireside chats. Here, here's a little snippet of it. You can listen to it for yourself. By bringing into the judicial system a steady and continuing stream of new and younger blood, I hope first to make the administration of all federal justice from the bottom to the top speedier and therefore less costly. Secondly, to bring to the decision of social and economic problems younger men who have had personal experience and contact with modern facts and circumstances under which average men have to live and work. But this idea drew immense criticism from the Congress. Both Democrats and Republicans accused FDR of trying to quote unquote pack the Supreme Court with justices that would uh, that would decide cases the way that he wanted cases to be decided. In the end, FDR did not get his 15 justices. It stayed at the current number we have today. Now, in more recent history, in 2016, when Justice Antonin Scalia passed away, President Barack Obama wanted to fill his seat with his nominee, Merrick Garland. However, at the time, Republican leader Mitch McConnell and the Republican Majority Congress refused to give Merrick Garland a hearing, and their excuse was, it's 2016, it's an election year, we shouldn't fill that Supreme Court seat until after the election, until after the people have voted. And so for a while, the Supreme Court only had eight justices, until April of 2017, when President Donald Trump filled Scalia's seat with his nominee, Neil Gorsuch. And now, with Justice Anthony Kennedy stepping down at the end of July, Mitch McConnell is pressing for a new Supreme Court justice to be put into that seat as soon as possible. But I ask you, Mitch, it's an election year. It's 2018. Why don't we wait until after the election to see how the people voted? Seems like a good excuse. Also kind of a familiar one. Right? And that's it for this episode of US 101, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this week. Really do appreciate it. And uh, hopefully now you're fully aware as to why the Supreme Court has nine justices and uh, and how it got to that point. Thanks to all of you that have been watching the videos, man. I can't thank you guys enough for your support. Really do appreciate it. Thanks to all of you that have been subscribing to the channel, liking the videos, sharing them, leaving comments in the comment section down below. Actually, let me know your thoughts. You think the Supreme Court should stick at nine? Should they go back to a lesser number of justices, more justices? Like, what do you think? How many justices do you think the Supreme Court should have? Let me know your thoughts. You can follow US 101 guys on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all those links down below in the description box. Guys, I will see you next week for an all new episode of US 101. Until then, I am all done. I hope, I hope the Supreme Court doesn't overturn Roe v. Wade. It shouldn't be about partisan politics when it comes to the Supreme Court, guys. It should be about upholding the law. That's, that's really it. It's very simple. Not difficult.